So we have the mat, and you're thinking to yourselves, that's a bit short. Yeah, because we've cut it. And the bit we've cut is in here. Look at that, perfect fit. <laughs> now we're going to, um, we've cut it to length, and once it's in there, then we're going to cut it to, to the shape, probably around there somewhere. I don't want it all the way up here, but it actually sits quite nicely. I, it sits better than I thought it was. I thought it might start sticking up in that, but it is actually going to mould in. That's the advantage of having rubber in the mat, or a lot of rubber, as opposed to any kind of plastic. Plus, obviously, plastic would be slippery. So this is our non-grip, non-slip, should I say, floor. That's going in to get some better grip. It'll also act as a dampener for any pots that bang on the floor or anything like that so you're not hammering on the fiberglass and this is opposed to having the floorboards which obviously kept us a lot higher in the boat and of course with floorboards a lot of muck can get underneath bits of fish anything like that could be quite nasty and little animals as well crawl underneath the floorboards where there's any gaps and you can't get them out and winkles that kind of thing whereas this I've got the bonus that I can actually lift it up and clean underneath so it is kind of removable or movable to be able to clean the boat when I need to. On top of that, it's black. It'll absorb a bit of heat and hopefully when you get a little bit of water, it'll just dry it off quicker. So your floor's not always so wet. We'll see, we'll see how we get on with that. Anyway, I better get on and uh, get this fitted. So we are gonna go, let me just check the base part is that line. Cause that's about right either side, eh? Yeah. Near yeah. enough, eh? Yeah. yeah. Near enough. It's a shame I can't cut it off. What can I? Check again. the curve it so we don't get a tearing effect by having it too sharp corners. So that would be where your water will plus we need to be able to get the box out so we need this just to be able to maneuver stuff a little bit. Not that it's too important. Right, so that is that bit done. I can always clean up any tight edges with a standing knife later. But I want it to settle first so we know what we're doing. Um. Right, I think this is where it starts to move a bit. We can stay for a while. So, I'm going to take that bit, and I'm going to just take this bit. I'm just going to make sure it's all flattening down first before we make the final sort of little trim ups. Right, so we just made this pole here. This is for to go onto here, to bolt it onto here with this on the back. The idea is when the ropes feed over, they catch here and they don't swing across to the back of the engine. I mean, with the other boat we had a, a wider transom, so we weren't, I wasn't worried about the ropes and they tended to stay out. But with this one, because it's got quite narrow and the way the angle of this boat is, it sort of wants the ropes to go towards the engine, so this will just keep the ropes from going over the back, hopefully. Also makes a great handle. Right, then put that through to there. Uh, no. 
So there you go, it's on, it's secured, and the best thing is, I can carry my shrimp net. Now what I will do actually is I will, this handle actually originally came off the landing net because I had a wooden handle and I had uh, the aluminium one, but I can always put one of these back on the landing net and then I can just stick the landing net in there when we're fishing. Somewhere to store it out the way. So, a couple of uses, plus it makes a good handle grip. This in rough weather when we're coming back, when we're sitting down just to so you're not rocking around so much. So there you go. Rubber floor mats are in. They obviously need time to settle down. They're still a bit ridged and that, but they'll settle. What we need is a really hot day to sort of mold them in to position, but uh, they'll get there. I might just make a few tweaks here and there on them. That's basically what it's gonna kind of look like. To That'll help protect the floor and also the most important thing is give plenty of grip when moving around on the boat. So you might be able to see here, I was fitting in, this is a winch cable and the idea of this is that it's bolted to the inside of the boat up there and it goes, when you put and have rods and reels left on the boat this goes through the reels up around the rod comes back and then you padlock it like that and the reason for winch cable is it's incredibly hard to cut so it's just to secure it's just more for the casual thieves although my reels and rods that are left on the boat tend to be old anyway but it's just to save the inconvenience of anybody pinching them So all the finishing touches are going on now, so I've just notched this wood, like put a notch in it in a bit of hardwood, and then this hardwood, and we've got the right screw on, it's going to go on here, I'm just going to make sure that it's not This fits, we'll see. There you go. One knife holder. And we've got a couple of knives in there, they're not coming out. They're kept near the box, so they're out of harm's way, you might say. But they're also, if you look, they're also kind of almost centered to the boat. So you can reach them at any time because knives are important if you get caught up anything, you've got to cut a line, if you had a hook in your hand or anything like that, you need to do things quick, then the knife is easy accessible. Or easily accessible. Just... lines in as you can see we've put this on we've got one over there but because we've got the electric lines and we've got security cables and that sort of thing running through there I decided to put an extra one on here and this will be for the fuel lines now I've got the this is for the Honda but I'm also putting a spare one in uh, for either for using with Suzuki later on or possibly using with um, I can always cut this off and change it to the Honda if we stay with the Honda We'll see how we get on with that. Now, I'm just sorting the tanks under there, and then I'm gonna put, fix this cupboard on permanently and you'll access the fueling through the cuddy. Well, as you can see, I'm putting up a couple of PVC pipes, old bits of pipe, to the side and now I'll put another one there they'll only just be the two on this board because uh, so you've got your knife holder there and these will just literally go in like that that's one and then another one will go here and that'll just be two rods I was going to do them here but it's more awkward because there's, there's nothing on the floor to go to and 
I'd have to bolt them and drill holes in the seat and I'd rather just stick them on the back of this board. As long as I, I'm going to keep them there, I don't want too far across so it's easy to walk here. And these will just be for the rods that are really in use when I'm fishing. Anything else can be stored down the side out of the way. But if I'm using a rod with a lure or a couple of rods, I can just chuck them in there. One with mackerel, lures one with a lure. Just for easy access. Just got to put the last one on. side as well you can possibly see let me turn you on the side down here this is the drain or well, the back part of the drain there's obviously a part in the front what it looks like when it's installed the water is allowed to run around both areas right well I haven't actually tested the winch yet so this is it first test she's plugged in she's ready to go just got to stick it Put the kill switch or the isolator on. Will it work? Let's make sure everything is it's good. There you go, first test of the winch. Just finishing this off. Um, as you can see, you undo that, pull that, turn it round to there, lock it in, ready for winching, nice and solid when it's pulling on the rope. Uh, tighten that wheel up so you get a bit less. Now I've still got to bolt these bolts at the bottom. I've only put this in here, just temporary, but I'm going to bolt it and clamp it tight to the uh, mount. But it's pretty. Pretty solid as it is. And then take that out. And when it's not being used, do that. Spin it round, lift that up, forward, lock it in like that. Then tighten that up. Now I'd like to go a bit further over, but because of the cuddy I couldn't go any further than that. But that is better. It's nice and straight. And um, yeah, and I might just put a piece under this foot as well, just to just to um, so it's got like double pressure, something like that. But it doesn't really, it's not going to go anywhere. But I still need to bolt this in. I've only just, I was just trying it out. So I've got to get a couple more bolts here through, which goes to a big piece of marine ply, which goes all the way along around here, around the back of this whole area, and along to here. So that'll take the strain, but that's not going anywhere. Plus, that'll act as a backup. Um, I'll put more in uh, a small rope on that, which will go to the front. Samson's post, I suppose you call it. But I'm not convinced with that metal post for more in the boat on. So I'm going to have a secondary rope just hooked to it. So if that happens to break, it'll pull onto this as a backup, so we don't lose the boat. It might damage the cover, but it'll should save the boat if we ever get storms that big. And thank you, I've forgotten your name, but I was sent this, this cleat, by a viewer. Thank you very much, it's come in very useful. Not quite what you'd expect, but it's perfect, it's got a lovely perfect shape for the bar to drop in and lock behind. 
for holding the winch, but it'll also, like I say, act as a backup rope to the front, just in case the front is ever a problem with that one in a big storm. But we should be alright. We should be alright. And there we go. We've just got a few more small jobs to do. A few things to finish off. Clean up. And she'll be ready for launch. <laughs>